The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Pro. Joining us here on realagriculture.com at uh, the 2015 Crop Connect conference in Winnipeg, we have Dr. Sean Conley of uh, the University of Wisconsin. Is this, uh, I guess, winter in Manitoba might be a little bit colder than in Wisconsin? Just a touch, but we were able to have some very cold weather that we would have been 25 degrees Fahrenheit okay. below, below zero. So. It's, it's about like home. So we won't complain here. <laughs> nope. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Today you talk to, uh, to growers about uh, the concept of phenotypic plasticity. It sounds fancy, uh, particularly talking about soybeans mm -hmm. and uh, having this characteristic. Can you explain what uh, what this means? Yeah. One of the challenges growers have is that you know, we've been we've um, when it, when it comes to phenotypic plasticity, it's the soybean plant's ability or capacity to compensate for thin soybean stands or for lower plant populations. It's one of the advantages that soybean would have over field corn, for example. I believe I mean, canola and both wheat both have a, a little bit of phenotypic plasticity to fill in those, those gaps. But what it really does is it allows that soybean plant to, to compensate so that uh, the yield of reduction or the yield hit to a grower for uh, decreased stands isn't as much as it would be, let's say, for field corn or other crops out there. This means if we have a poor stand in when we're getting into later in June, maybe even early July, it, it might not be as bad as, as what it, it looks at that time? Right. Uh, I, mean, I think we always are you know, very cautious. We're always trying to maximize yield and really trying to drive our production system to, to advance our farming operation. And what I'm really trying to get growers to really go understand is that today's genetics are even better than, let's say, they were 10 or 20 years ago of that plant's ability to compensate for these thin stands. And actually, over the last 80 years, Soybean breeders uh, have bred that soybean plant to put on three times as much yield potential on those branches that uh, that come in in these thinner stands or poor stands. That really allows that that yield hit to be minimized today uh, for for these thin thin stands. And the point I'm really trying to get there is encourage growers that, given our you know looking down the road to 2015 and 16, some of these dep depressed commodity markets, that uh, they should really focus in on on uh, spending their dollars wisely and even if you do have a relatively thin stand it's really not worth their their economic bottom line to go in and, and uh, start over from scratch because that plant can compensate and it can fill it in. Now if it, it gets below a certain base population then I would encourage growers to come in either if they have RTK or some other type of uh, precision ag technology to come in and offset either between the rows kind of crossways across the rows and, and build that base population up. But just be aware that that soybean, those, those uh, later planted soybeans you put in there, uh, will not give you that much more of a yield gain. So the, the base population will give you 80 to 90 percent of the yield. So even if you double or triple that amount you put out there, it's only going to give you that 10 to 15 percent. So don't expect a lot. It might look better. But economics, just make sure you watch your bottom line over the next couple of years. So with this, uh, with the increased number of seeds that we're seeing on, on the branches instead of the, the main stem, would you go as far as to recommend a reduced seeding rate? I, I really try to encourage growers to really rethink their seeding rate. And I, I know the base population here in, in, in the provinces is going to be higher than it is, for example, in the states. But I think more often than not, growers are overseeding. Uh, it's usually been a cheap insurance policy. However, as soybean seed has increased over the last 10 years, that cheap base insurance policy isn't as cheap as it used to be. So I really get growers to consider a couple things. First of all, um, understand what type of equipment they have. Obviously, if you have a, a row unit or a planter, you can really fine tune those seeding rates a little bit more precisely than you can with an air seeder. There's a lot more play, if you will, in an air seeder. So just make sure that you are not really focus so much on the seeding rate, but that base population to get you max yield in in your in your locale. Okay. So what you're saying is basically soybeans can be pretty forgiving though if uh, if you have a poor plant stand or or a reduced plant stand. Soybeans are very forgiving, but I think that's one also one of the, the misnomers we, we deal with soybean is that people say, Oh soybean are very forgiving and they are a scavenger crop. But I always want to remind growers that yes they may be true. 
But if you treat soybeans as a scavenger crop, remember you're going to get scavenger crop yields. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And if anyone has any further questions related to soybean, feel free to visit my website, which is uh, coolbean.info. All right. Cool beans. Pretty easy to remember. Cool beans. Thank you. Thank you.